I'm Steve Spear, a senior lecturer here at MIT, the Sloan School of Management. I've been on the faculty since about 2005, and I'm a graduate of the program. I came here in 1989 to do a master's in management when Lester Thoreau was dean and got so caught up in the whole management of technology energy that was part of Sloan and MIT more generally. I actually spent even more time getting a master's in mechanical engineering before the MIT Japan program helped me go to Japan for a year to learn what they were doing at the time. The thing that's uh, most fascinated me, and this goes back about 30 years, is how managers and leaders have a profound opportunity to create the conditions in which people can give much fuller expression to their intellectual potential than otherwise would be the case. That's for the individual. And then at the same time, create conditions in which whatever an individual can contribute towards common purpose, all of those individual contributions can harmonize and integrate in such beautiful fashion to generate so much more value that can be delivered into society than otherwise would be the case. That quest to explain how that happens, and it happens in a lot of situations, um, unfortunately too few, but it, it happens across all sorts of verticals, you know, planes, trains, automobiles, tech, high tech, biotech, pharma, government, social services, education. And it happens across all phases of value creation from way upstream science and technology through R&D, design, um, production, operations, execution, delivery. We find examples everywhere that um, when managers and leaders figure out how to create these very enabling conditions for people to give such great expression to their potential, the, what they can deliver onto society is just really outstanding. And uh, my work has really been trying to identify those who do it very well and then give some explanation so that others can be part of that elite group of high performers too. When we think about the issue of how do we create conditions in which individually people can give full expression to their creative potential, and then when we try to tap across the many individuals who bring different experience, different expertise, different skill sets, different capabilities, how we integrate and harmonize that towards common purpose, we have to think in terms of managing that creativity at, at three complementary layers. So the one, and especially you know, here at MIT School of Science, School of Engineering, Kendall Square, we tend to think about the innovative energy that goes into the bench top in front of us. There, there's an engineer or a technological or scientific object. It could be a gear, it could be a gene, it could be a piece of commuter, computer code, whatever it is. There's the, the object in front of us, literally or metaphorically. And that's one level at which we're investing our creative energy and uh, talents. Up from that is the instrumentation through which we act onto that scientific, engineered, technological object. So um, in the case of uh, the Broad Institute, you know, attached to MIT and uh, genetic technologies, there's the genes on which they, they operate, and then there's the CRISPR technology and these other genetic technologies which they operate. Um, you know, for the folks who do, you know, old school physical product, there's the machine tooling onto which they operate onto physical things. Um, there's a layer above that where our concern or observation is that too many managers forget that just as you have to have component pieces of technology which are assembled and architected into, into larger systems, that you have to do the same thing with the people who are part of your organization. And so we've talked about this social overlay of processes, policies, routines, however you want to describe them, as the social circuitry that joins people towards collective effort. Now, when we first started using the term social circuitry to describe the social overlay, this third layer at which people have to investigate, invest their creative energy and their efforts, um, some people thought it was metaphorical. But in, in fact, I'd argue that social circuitry is more literal, a description of what the social overlay is. Because if you think about circuitry, circuitry is a way of taking, um, creating connection between two locations. One is a location which has a high concentration of something valuable, but where it's not needed, and uh, allowing it to flow to a place uh, where it's in low concentration, but it's needed more. And that's, that's the essence of a circuit, you know, whether it's electrons in a, um, flowing through or pressurized fluids, or whatever else it is, we can create circuits to get things from where they are to where they need to be. When we're doing our creative work within an organization, we have the same issue of concentrations of ideas, concentrations of insight, concentrations of information, perspective, etc., which may exist in one place, but they have to 
interact with other ideas, other insights, other perspectives, which are in another location. And so how we create um, this circuitry of who talks to whom, who collaborates with whom, who's creative with whom, about what, when, in what fashion, informed by what resources, has a huge impact on the ability of people to focus on the problems in front of them. And if we design the circuitry poorly, uh, we run the risk that people spend so much time trying to figure out with whom they should connect, how they should connect, when they should connect, that the finite energy they have, the finite time they have to be creative is spent too much exploring the enterprise itself and the environment in which people are working and too little time is spent individually or in, in, in team uh, focusing on the problems, social or technical, that we formed up as an organization to solve in the first place.